your dollar. Sometimes you've got to make a hell of a mess. Oh, shit! What? We got them right hands! Meet Laurie Vaudier. The oil spot. The demolition man. Where you see mayhem. Ah, watch your head. Laurie sees money. That window might be worth 500 bucks at the end of the day. 60 bucks, 10 bucks, 100 bucks a pair. Now, Laurie's a little rough around the edges. Every day you see him, you think he's a hobo. But don't let that business suit fool you. He's razor sharp on the deal. I'd like to slip into something comfortable like your wallet. And you've never not won in your life. 50 bucks here, 100 there, it all adds up. This is where Laurie rests his boots after another day on the job. How good's that, mate? That's 120 years old. Surrounded by the knickknacks, he's picked up on the way. I just love junk. Behind Laurie is a team of champions. <laughs> Jabber, the right-hand man. I've probably been sacked 30 times since I've been here. Benny, the muscle. Laurie doesn't care what you look like or what you talk like. And that's why I love you, Benny. You're strong. He'll give anyone a go. At home base, wife Sue keeps the demo man on track. I got money. You got money? Spend it too much. It's getting out of control. While the next generation is learning on the job. I can drive. Excavators, bobcats, trucks. Oh. <laughs> I can drive anything. Lorry body air. How good is that? Wheeler. I'll pay a hundred for it. That's it. Dealer. I'll toss you. <laughs> Junk man. How much? How much? How much is that? Demolition man. It's a clear morning in country Victoria. A good deal is in the air, and Laurie is on the move. Question is, what's coming home in the back of the truck today? A bloke rang up yesterday. He said, I've got a job in Yarraville. He says, got them ruby etched windows in it. I said, I'll be there tomorrow. Red glass. It's in a lot of old Victorian houses. I like that glass. So, we're here. Get a hammer and chisel. We'll get the doors off. The ruby glass is the big prize, but Laurie's nose is twitching. Beautiful. This cottage is over a hundred years old. What other treasure is buried here? Some goodies here, Benny. Got a little bit of a drink here. Sometimes you find, look at that. Mr. and Mrs. Corby, request a pleasure, 1902. How's that? Bad luck's not an hundred dollar note. And lucky for Laurie, he's got Benny. Benny's a human crane. Benny's as strong as an ox. He's only 30 years old. I know he looks older. These windows are very special because they've got these lovely red bloody stained glass in them. And apparently they're quite rare. Hey, come, Benny. Is this right, getting all this plaster off the edges? No, no, not off the edges. Just get the pick. Just smash. He teaches me how to have a lack of patience. He teaches me how to swear in different situations. Me, Benny? You don't teach him, he just picks things up. Has that got fuel and oil in it? What's the use of bringing it in without checking it? He's, he's like a really good dog, he learns really easy. I got the pinch bar there, the wonder bar. Get that ready and uh, take the top bit off. Oh, yeah, I gave him a new pinch bar because he lost another one the other day. I reckon he eats them. Well, he just got tools to replace all the ones that I apparently lose. He's probably go he probably goes to the market on Saturdays and sells them. I just get blamed. I'm the scapegoat. Laurie, see this? It's going in the top. 
Laurie buys me lunch. That's enough love for me. How good's that? Ah! Watch your head. He came to me and he said, can I have a job? And I said, no. But he just turned up for work. How's that, mate? Here, yeah, Laurie. Tell me I'm not mad. Have a go at this tape. You're not mad. <laughs> I thought he's a friendly looking bloke. I wouldn't mind working for him. Where did I get this from? I reckon you bought that at the 50 cent shop. Well, it ain't worth 50 cents, I can tell you. And he said, come in tomorrow, I might have a job for you. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I felt sorry for him. That's it. That'll do, Benjamin. Job's done. In five hours, anything that'll sell, including the door frame and two windows, is on the back of Laurie's truck. Yeah, good job. Good job. Really good job. Well, I came expecting to get the windows and got a few doors. A couple of fireplaces. Beautiful. And I'll come back and get the floor next week. There, yeah, boys. Everything Laurie salvages ends up here in the small Victorian town of Camperdown. His second-hand yard is where a truckload of junk is magically turned into cash. This is the Aladdin's cave. This is my yard here. It's full of shit, but you got things. It all comes out of house demolition. Everything's for sale and everything's got a purpose. 500 is a lot, Sam, you can have them for. We'll take them. Right, we'll load them up now. I've got windows and doors and bits of furniture and who knows what we got. Half the time, I don't know what we got. We've got dunnies. These are the dunnies out of the Flemington race course. Bart Cummings sat on one of them. Well, I bet you he did. Some things... You get here and they're here for five minutes and they sell some things, you never sell them. A buck a metre, yep. you pick out what you want. We've got a few doors in stock here, about a million. Why would they buy a new door? You buy this door here for ten bucks. You know, there's some really good shit here, like these windows, bloody good. And all I can do, I say to the people, I can guarantee they work. If they don't work, bring it back, I'll give you your money back. Sometimes it's a bargain, sometimes it's a piece of shit. Selling salvage is Laurie's bread and butter. Searching the country for rare antiques is how he makes the cream and builds his incredible collection. Yeah, I'm just going up to see old junkyard Frank and uh, he's got some gates there I've got to buy off him. Oh, they're old sunshine gates. They're probably 80 years old. They're all welded and they've got cast corners in them. And they're really popular. Everyone likes them. He's a real straight shooter. He's a grumpy bastard. And if you do the wrong thing, if you piss him off, he'll hate you forever. He looks like my twin brother. Except he's got no f***ing hair. <laughs> Honest Frank. You nearly took the gate out, Laurie. Well, you've got plenty of other gates here. It won't matter. How are you, mate? Good, mate. So, Good to see you. Now, I've come to have a look at those gates. Yep. I want eight of them, mate. Yep. So how many are there? There's eight there. They're, they're bloody nice, these. These sunshine gates, Frank, how much are these? You want to take a lot, or...? Yeah, I'll, no, well, it depends on your price, you know. They're 200 each. 200 each. Yeah, all right, all right. No good me trying to haggle with you, because you're... You don't haggle with Frankie. There's one price. There's Frank's price. There's no other price. Anything else? Let's have a quick look around. The more money you spend, the better. How much do you want for that sign? Bendigo's for Neil Nyer. Uh, 150. You know, that's off an old horse carriage. Is it? Yeah. Would have been a, like a cop and code. It's good, isn't it? Dude, give, I'll give you 100 for it. 120. All right, I'll take that. I love it. He loves it. Not worth 120, but I love it. Oh, shit. How good's that? 
Yeah, beautiful. This little lolly jar here, mate. That's a malted milk. Yeah, well, That's well, a... yeah, yeah, for the malt. Yeah. You know what's that? It... No, it's not for sale. You know oh. where it came from? No. Golden Flea Service Station in Rainbow. Uh, well, what do you want to sell to me? How much you give me? A hundred. No. Oh, how much do you want? No, no. Two Don't walk two, away. Two fifty. Can I owe it to you? Yeah, you can owe it to me. I'll take it. <laughs> That's going in my lolly shop. The jar and the sign go straight to the pool room. Laurie's own collection. And the gates? They're part of a bigger plan. Thanks, Frankie. No worries. Good Thank on you, mate. Thank you. I'll, I'll catch you soon. Okay. All right? Coming up on Demolition Man. How are we going to get it in the truck? One piano, five blokes, no idea. Help. We just lost a bit of the piano. Demolition Man's blood is up. Beautiful. He's just bought eight vintage gates for 200 bucks each. I love these gates and I reckon they are a fair price. That's only part one of the deal. Part two is waiting just down the road. Well, I've been over to Frank's and I bought these gates and I've come here and I'm, I'm going to do a deal with Dave on these gates and I'll probably do do a, a horse trade with him, swap for a bit of furniture that I'm going to take back to the yard and I can sell differently. You want to hand unload them gates or not? Yes, please. Laurie only bought these gates because he knew Dave was in the market for them. The big unknown is how much profit he's going to clear. 3 8 24 2400 right? Oh, shit, you can count today. Righto, that'll do. So you happy with that? Yep. Now comes the hard part. I've got to haggle with you. We'll get even. With 800 bucks burning a hole in his pocket, Laurie's like a shark, always moving on to the next buy and the next sale. I'm up on um, old shit because I buy and sell it all the time. Sometimes you know exactly what it's worth, sometimes you haven't got a clue. Suck it and see. This, I like this. Yeah, but you haven't got enough money. What's enough money to buy it? Five. Two dear for me. Told you you never had enough oh, no. money. Oh, it was worth a try. Jesus, you're bloody... No wonder Sue gets shitty with you. Keep walking, keep walking. Now, that's good buying for you. Give us uh, 250 <laughs> You're living in the past with prophecies of the future. You're unbelievable. I'll pay a hundred for it. That's it. No more. hundred. So you can talk to Pettis, I'll go with you. Righto. Righto. That cash for a hundred bucks. I'll put that in the shop and I'll put 220 on it or something and it'll go really quickly because somebody will get it upholstered and I think they've got the bargain of the century. All right, what do you want next? Uh, church pews, mate. I'm going to get religious. How good you go to church? I'm going to get religious. How much are these? hundred each, non-negotiable. You're making a donation to the church. Yeah, I'll take them. Three okay. Hundred. They're mine. At least you can sleep lightly of a night. See those chairs? I thought they were pine. They're cedar. I paid a hundred each for them. I'm very happy with them. You right now? Yep. That's it. No more. I feel a lot better now. Oh, I'm pleased I've made you happy. Yeah, great day. Another day in paradise. Whatever Laurie doesn't sell ends up here at his modest home, adding to one of the biggest private antique collections in Australia. If it's for your collection, you always pay a little bit more. Well, if I wanted, I'd buy it. Well, within reason. Here at the homestead, Laurie's wife Sue wages a never-ending battle to keep the books balanced and Laurie's spending in check. Ever since I've known Laurie, he's been a hoarder. He just, he loves it. He does see the value in things. Like, if I think it's junk, he can see money in it. What are you doing today? I'm going to go down to Milts and get this piano. Oh, no, <laughs> no, don't yell at me. I just... Laurie. I've done the deal with him 
can't, I can't do anything about it. Why a piano? What? Why a piano? Charlie might want to learn to play. No, he doesn't want to learn to play piano. What does it matter? Because you're a spendaholic. Just, it'll be right, love. We're under control. We're under control. When it comes to moving pianos, it's important to remember the three P's. Patience, precision, and above all, planning. So what's the plan, mate? No plan. We'll have to suck at the sea. Is it easy to get to this piano? I don't think so. When Laurie said he was going to move a piano, I thought, you should have hired a f piano mover, you tight ass. You'll have to have it true if you want to succeed Why? I'm never going to use it. Oh. Well, then you don't have to have it true. How are we going to get it in the truck? That is a good... Question. Jabba. He's like me second son. That is a nightmare. Yeah, hey, Donnie, how are you, mate? How you doing, mate? Laurie's got his own way of doing things. I don't have any skill whatsoever to be moving a piano. Never moved one in my life, never thought of moving one in my life. When we got there and I saw the size of the piano and the fact that it was up on the second story, I thought this is going to be quite a mammoth task. Oh. Donnie, it looks heavy. It is bloody heavy, let me tell you. The outcome of today will be Laurie will end up with a rather lovely piano in his house or a rather badly damaged one. With no experience in moving pianos... Grab the corner so it doesn't fling open. Right. Laurie's $10,000 musical instrument could become $10,000 worth of kindling with just one slip. The heaviest parts this end... So technically we could probably stand, hang on, stand that end up, get the trolley underneath and then we can lay it down. Right. Ready, set, go. Push, Benny. Beautiful. Right, let's just, go. Just slowly, slowly. Right, and we've got to now, pull down. Yeah, you know, you know what? thing is heavy. Slowly, slowly. Oh, oh shit. Just lost a bit of the piano. The lid just came off. Get it out of the way, mate. Milton, he said to me he's not paying for it till it gets to the ground. I'm not paying for it till it gets in the house at camp now. Yeah, there it goes. The hardest bit would have been getting it out of that doorway. Once we got it onto its side and trying to get it onto the trolley, the thing probably weighs five, six hundred kilos or more. Left for again, Benny. The human crane. Benny, right up. It weighed a ton and we had it on the trolley and we had some bits of wood on the trolley. Then the bits of wood slipped and... Yeah, it wasn't too good. This is a f nightmare. No wonder f Sue told me not to buy it. Why didn't you listen? Why didn't I listen? <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll be right. It's pretty solid. It's a fine line between a 10 grand piano and a wife saying, I told you so. Bye. Right. Right. I'm still a bit nervous. It's only a third of the way done because now we've got a cart at home with our... Then we've got to get it in the house for that. Let's get it in the truck, okay? It's gonna move. It's gonna go and go. The piano mover. <laughs> Professional piano mover. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Benny, can we push, mate? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Benny. Shit, did that, that get any scratch, did it? Definitely got a scratch on its way into the back of the truck. That wasn't my fault, though. That was Benny's fault. <laughs> Laurie, you got to hold the top up. Yeah, right. I'm holding the top. Ready? In you go, Benny. That's it. That's it. That's it. Don't need it anymore. It didn't go to plan because we didn't have a plan. We just winged it. There's four of us here lifting it here and we've got a crane. We've got to get the thing into lorries. There's no crane there. There'll be only three of us. With the piano strapped safely in the back of the truck, Benny and Jabber move on to phase two of the plan they don't have. What do you think will happen if the piano is all smashed? It won't be smashed, Benny. The 
Demo Man's homestead is massive. When your private antique collection is bigger than most museums, it has to be. Out in Laurie's backyard, his own historic village, complete with a blacksmith's workshop. And today, one of his favourite toys is getting serviced by Morgan the Mechanic. How much pressure's up? 120 pounds. It's going to blow up in the middle. Well, it might blow up, but it's all right. Can we get it out? Yeah, I'm waiting for you. Right ho. I'm excited. Good day. When I first met him, I think he had two traction engines. And I think at the moment, he's got 14 traction engines now, which, from a man that didn't really know if he wanted to collect them, that, that was fairly amazing. You've greased it all, everything's good, everything's ready. Let's have a go then. <laughs> stand today is a Marshall traction engine. Originally built as an agricultural engine and built in Gainsborough in England and sent out to the colonies to work in Tasmania. We've got to go up to the house and pick up two. Oh, then I've got to take it for a drive down the driveway. What do you not like about it? How good's that, mate? That's 120 years old and it's still going. Beautiful. They're not super rare. They're super fun. When Laurie decides to take Sue for a drive, he doesn't muck around. You coming for a ride? Yeah. Come on. I like them. I like the steam engines. I like the graphics of them. I like the sound of them. How's that? Let's go. Well, you don't see them. So let's just come to somewhere like here. You just don't see them in Australia. There's no bullshit with Laurie. He will tell you exactly what you will be doing and what he wants you to do. It makes things very straightforward. Laurie's always been very happy to share his toys. As I, say, I think deep down he actually likes seeing people happy. How good's that, mate? That's yeah. better than sex. I don't know about that, Laurie. It's been a long day for Jabber and Benny, and they've still got to get through phase three of the piano survival test. How are you going to get it in the house? With great difficulty. Look at these, Laurie. Look, I've fallen away, mate, for you. Jesus, you're talented. Rollers. You're talented, love. I know, I know. When they put up with the piano, I never thought we'd get it in undamaged. I can't believe they got it out of a two-storey house with a crane. Put them rollers get, under. Get a roller. Right, right, right. Three. Three. Right. Oh, got it. That's it. Right, hang on, hang on. Right, eh? Now, grab the, car grab the carpet. Benny? Ready, Ollie? Right, ready. Two, three. Right. I can't believe we're that smart. Oh, it was a bit stressed today because I thought we'd break it, but we didn't. Oh, we put a couple of little scratches on it, but it's just experts. I'm going to tune it because I've got a recital here on Friday night. <laughs> I think Sue fell in love with it as soon as she saw it. Come on, Benny. Come on, Benny. I've always been able to pick up a tune and I can play by ear. I don't like reading music. I don't think anybody knew I could play. I keep a lot of secrets in myself. Yeah! 